Hey, Liz and Jenny. How are you guys doing? Hi, Anthony. Thanks for calling. Yeah, hell of a market. Back to uh, all-time highs. And uh, I don't know, you guys been uh, bullish or bearish lately? I know Tom and Tony have been they've been bearish for two years so but, uh, you know what anthony it's tricky because we try to be a little bit we tried a little bit more neutral so i had some bullish positions in and so i take my profits and that's part of the problem is that i didn't intend to be bearish and now i am right because we we did have a lot of bullish positions on and we've been closing them so then when you close all your bullish positions i mean they saved me or they've been <laughs> saving me but um, then it's, you have to try to reestablish um, reestablish new positions, and it's very hard to um, put on find you know positions products that you want to be bullish in at these levels. You almost need to be already have been bullish, and it's it's tricky because we do take our profits. So well, I uh, I I've, I've been very patient. I got out of the market in May after hitting all time highs, and uh, of course it continued to grind higher in the June and July. But I wasn't going to chase it. So, uh, yeah, two and a half weeks ago, the market had uh, the 2% dip, and I'm primarily a volatility trader. So um, if you bring up SVXY. SVXY, we'll pull that up right now. Yeah. Uh, basically, short volatility. So it, it goes up when volatility goes down. I think you guys are familiar with it. You so, know what? I've never oh. traded SVXY. Have you? Oh, no? Okay. Liz? No, I never Let's have. Let's um, pull up the platform, please. And uh, so it goes okay. up and volatility goes down. So it's an inverse. Yeah, an yeah. Well, the, basically, the question is simple. So I bought it at um, at 75 a couple weeks ago. And I was a couple days early, but when the bomb started dropping in Iraq two weeks ago, it bottomed out. It went down to 70, then bounced back up and um, went all the way up to, uh, well, now you see it's at 85. Yeah, uh -huh, right. So, uh, but after about three days, I, you know, wasn't sure if it was going to go back down, so I decided to sell a covered call. So I bought a thousand shares at seventy-five, then I sold uh, an eighty-one covered call for two bucks. In which, and, in uh, which and cycle? Course, Is that it kept going up. And what I'm wondering is, what do you do when you have a covered call and you want to keep? Keep in the trade. Is oh, there see, any you max your rolling up? So, so, you sold the eighty-one wait, call. What what Mike? What month are you in? What cycle? This oh, uh, August. It's a uh, expire this week tomorrow. Oh, it expires tomorrow. Okay, so yeah, the weekly, weekly. Yeah, yeah, when you sell a call and you own the product, you 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 decided to cap your gains. That's pretty much where this is the most you can make on a trade. So right, right. Well, there's a couple, so, there are a couple things because if, if, if you look at the premium in this, if you look at the premium in this, if you go out to a regular SEP, that 81 call, like if you were to roll that 81 call, um, which is no different than closing the position and selling the 81 put, that 81 strike has, still has 330. Whoa. There's three, $330 in extrinsic value. So if you could, you could roll to the same call and collect another $330, but again, that's no different than closing the position and selling that 81 put. Exactly. There is no there is no difference in doing that. So I, I, I kind of take a loss on the call, but I gained on the stock. Well, no, uh, no. I mean, you made money because, I mean, a, a covered call is bullish. You made money. You just capped your gains. Yeah. Right. So, so you can't yeah, look at I, it as individual positions. You, you, you can't. You can't separate it. So once you sell that call, you capped your gains. At this point, at this point, with it expiring tomorrow, you've made all that you can. If you wanted to reestablish, I mean, technically, that would be the wheel of fortune. You want to go out and then sell an out-of-the-money put. Which would be the same thing as doing. Yeah. So right. Yeah. So because think about it. If you if you you know bought back your short call, let's just say you you kept it with the same strike and um, see say you part. bought back your short call in the one day. In the one day, the eighty one call. And you're better off selling that put because the capital required in a margin account. If you're are you trading in a margin account? Yeah, yeah, but this is going to be trade. This is not going to tie up typical margin because this is a it is um, in, it a leverage. Is, it is in mine. It is a leverage product. So it's, if it's you sell that put, it's tying up typical margin. I'm selling that put for three twenty, and it's tying up twelve hundred dollars. So 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 you're saying roll it, even though I I sold it at two, I have to cover it higher, but I'm getting three more dollars, um, and if it comes well, back down, huh? 
so it, well, like the, the simplest way for us to explain this is it's the wheel of fortune. So you capture this trade. If you look at this trade as a standalone trade, what you have, you capture gains. You made it. the most you're going to make on that you, trade. That yes. You have. So what Jenny's saying yeah. is, if you sell the, if you sell, roll your August to September, you're adding another three hundred dollars in profitability. No matter where it goes, if it continues to pop up. That's fine. If it comes back down, you run the risk of losing this. And if more. it goes below, yes. if it goes below the strike level. But, but yeah. if it's something that you still want to be in, this is this is what we call this is what we do every Monday. It's the wheel of fortune, bullish segments. So I mean, you can roll this call, but realize it's the exact same thing as closing the position and selling the put. So, which may save you some margin. Right, and so that's what Liz was saying. You know, if you roll the call, you still have a covered call where you have the stock and you have the short call, and that's tying up a lot of capital. If you close your position, take your profits on that position, and, you know, you still want to be in it, you know, sell some puts in September, it's going to tie up less capital because you're in a margin account. Okay, all right. I did, I did try it. I bought a vertical spread, on the 85, 87 for this week, and and that seems to be working out. But of course, it's not the the maximum that I could have got if I just didn't do anything. But I figured, uh -huh. you know, I didn't want to be greedy. So, but okay, so that's interesting. Yeah, so I could roll that and then um, continue that gain. And okay, and all remember, right. This well, is going to continue I, to go up as volatility goes down because this is an inverse, and the VIX is at what 13 right now, 12, right. So just a little, so, I'm just putting that out there. Right. So uh, you know, I mean, so you're, you banking on, to, you're banking on volatility going to zero. I mean, you're right by continuing to have a bullish position here. You think volatility is going to continue to go lower, and that's okay. That's that's. I'm just right. making. But a uh, maybe you know, maybe you're better off taking your profits. If this were me, I would take my profits and then wait for a pullback and reestablish. Wait for a day. Yeah, take my profits. Wait for a day that it pulls back again, and then put on another trade. Yep. All right, but Anthony, yep. thanks Let's, for the great call. We are, we have somebody waiting on the line, so we got. Okay. Yeah. Thanks right. for calling. Thanks, Anthony. I'm going to keep an eye on that product.